The following is a listener-supported ministry from the Grace Evangelical Society. In Mark chapter 5, the number 12 shows up twice. There's also death and the overcoming of death. Hope you'll stay tuned for the episode ahead. This is Grace in Focus. We're so glad that you joined us today. Grace in Focus comes to you from the Grace Evangelical Society in North Texas. Please go to our website to find out more about us. We have many articles there, quite a few books in our store, and you can also read our daily blogs. That's at faithalone.org. Now with today's discussion, here are Bob Wilkin and Ken Yates. I am thrilled to be here with Bob Wilkin, and I'm Ken Yates. And Thank we're, you, Ken. Yeah, there you go. There you go. I, I am buttering up the boss. Oh, That's what I'm doing there. Bob, you're the greatest. Thank you're just you. the greatest. Thank you, Ken. <laughs> and you're good looking, too. Oh, you and I have faces <laughs> made for radio. There you go. In the military, we call that eating cheese. Well, we used to. I don't know if it still is. And I don't well, know. Well, you know, the- we have a guy that works here named... Uh, Jackson, and he used to be a captain. Right. And when he was a captain in the Army, they called him Captain Jack. Right. Yeah, or Captain Jackson, but for short, Captain Jack. And you said you served with a guy whose last name was Jack. Right. And he was, and a, he was a captain. And what was the song you used to sing? There's a little uh, running cadence we had. Hey, hey, Captain Jack, meet me down at the railroad track. And this guy came into our unit. That was his name. And uh, <laughs> so we made fun of him. You know? <laughs> hey, hey, Captain Jack. <laughs> meet me down at the railroad track, which I don't know what that means. So what does that and mean? And you're doing that while you're running? While you're running, you know, a little cadence. That did we Two, do that? four, six, eight, hey, no. Hey, hey, Captain Jack. All right, people, I'm sorry for that, but uh, we're in uh, Mark 5. That's right. And we're in this uh, important passage of two daughters of Israel, and the number 12, 12 years applies to both of them. That's exactly right. And this is some kind of... What did you call it? A bologna sandwich? Yeah, or a sandwich. Mark has. Why is it a sandwich? Well, what you have, and there's a there's five or six of them in the Gospel of Mark. Which what Mark does is, he'll start off a story, and then he'll interrupt that story, and then he'll finish the story that he began. And the beginning of the story, and then when he concludes it, is like the bread on a sandwich. And then what's in the middle, we call it the bologna. Right. Yeah. What he does is he connects them. They're connected in some way. This is just for anyone who's interested in studying the Gospel of Mark, just to be looking for these things and asking yourself, well, what's the purpose here? And we see this here. What happens is in Mark chapter 5, starting in verse 21, through the end of the chapter, there's a man who has a daughter who's dying. His name's Jairus. And, and what did you say his name is in Spanish? Oh, I think they would they would pronounce the J high, Hyrus, or, or something yeah. like that. But we say Jairus or Yeah, Jairus. yeah. And he's a leader of the synagogue. That's right. And he comes down and— But, he, but he's probably a believer in Jesus Christ. Yes. Because yes. he comes to him for the healing of his— And kneels uh, down before him. And he his has, daughter's like 12, right? Right. And, and his daughter's 12, and he goes, my daughter is sick to the point of death. Come do that. And so we're introduced to this 12-year-old girl and her father. Well, then— But G- that story leaves for a while. That's exactly right. That's the bread. Okay, here he comes. I got this 12-year-old daughter. Boom, there's the bread. Well, then Jesus says, okay, I'll go to your house and heal her. And so they're going. Well, now there's another story. With another 12-year issue. Another 12-year issue. There's another woman who comes upon the scene who has an issue of blood. And she's gone to all kinds of doctors, spent all kinds of money, because in Israel— To have an issue of blood would mean she was ceremonially unclean for 12 years. Exactly. I mean, for 12 years, she couldn't go to the temple. Right. For 12 years, she couldn't be around people, right? Right. Because she was unclean, unclean. Couldn't touch her. Almost like a leper. That's exactly right. I remember reading some guy talking about this, some doctor saying they think probably she had some kind of uterine hemorrhage, Mm -hmm. you know, so she was constantly bleeding. And you can imagine after 12 years, what would that do to your health? Right. You know, and this guy who I guess was a doctor was talking, she would have heart palpitations. She would be anemic. Her hair would be falling out. I mean, she, you could say, like you said, a a leper, and that's a good illustration. She was like a walking death. So we could say she was dying too, just like the 12 year old girl was. Right. By the way, we're going to see that the girl dies and she's unclean. 
you can't touch. She's dead. You can't touch. You can't touch. By. But Jesus touches both of them. Wow. So these are all connected. Well, she touches Jesus, right? right? Jesus is touched by both. Right, right. right. Jesus would be defiled by both. And so not only— Except it's the opposite. It's, it's exactly right. him being defiled, he cleans. That's exactly right. He and heals. he raises the dead. Yeah. And so we've got this defilement thing going on here. And by the way, that's why she touches him in secret, because she knows. She believes he's the Christ. What would the Christ think if someone like her touched him? She doesn't even want him to know that she's touched him. That's why she comes up from behind him to touch him, you know. And she doesn't want to make it public. She doesn't want to make a scene. No, she doesn't want that. Even after she's healed, she's really not anxious for everybody to know. She just wants to leave. (laughs) Yeah. She, She just wants to get out of there. She knows she's been healed, and she wants to get out of there. By the way, this is the only place where Jesus calls somebody a daughter. Really? Yes. In the Gospel of Mark, this is the only place... Obviously, that's a connection here. Notice in verse 34 what Jesus says to her. Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your... And then notice the next verse. They come and tell Jerish, your daughter is dead. So obviously, Mark is connecting these two accounts. Yeah, and by the way, in verse 34, the part about has made you well is sozo. Your faith has saved you saved you from the physical problem. Although I think it's your view, this woman's a believer already. Yes, I think she's She's a believer. She's born again. Yes. But she's got this tremendous problem, and she knows going to the Messiah is the place to go for the solution. Yeah, I think that's clearly what's going on here. Did you know that the Grace Evangelical Society offers an MDiv degree through our online seminary? And tuition is free to those who maintain a 3.0 grade average. It is a three-year degree program, and you can submit your application now to gain acceptance. Then stay apprised of our registration periods for upcoming semester terms. Program and application details can be found at gesseminary.org. Have a look at our MDiv degree. Become an approved workman. Find out how. gesseminary.org. Bob and I aren't really given any deep truths here. We're just trying to show how when we study the scriptures, some of the things we should be looking for here. Because again, you go through there and say, well, I'm not sure what Mark is doing, but he's obviously connecting these two. Right. Right. The word daughter is used in both places. 12 years is used in both places. One person is literally dies. The other one is in the dying process. Exactly. And both of them deal with defilement. If you're touched by them, Jesus overcomes all this. Right. And he's able to rectify both of these situations. But when you look at the sandwich thing, you got the bread. Okay, here comes Jairus with his daughter saying, my daughter is, is at the point of death. Can you come? And then we get this story of this woman who's at the point of death. Right. And she comes. And by the way, she also kneels down before him as well. Which is worship. Right. You know, after he says, who touched me? She comes and she comes before him just like Jairus did. And then after she is healed, Mark completes the story that it began with Jairus. So there's the two pieces of bread. You know, he, he starts it. Here's Jairus with his daughter. Then the baloney is the woman with the issue of blood that's connected in all these ways that we've talked about. And then the story of Jairus and his daughter, because then what happens after she's healed, they come and say, your daughter's dead. And then we have the... After the woman with the issue of blood is healed. That's right. That's when we get the other one saying she's dead. And he comes to her and raises her from the dead. Yeah, because Jesus doesn't stop at that point. Right. Jesus keeps going. He says... You would think... Okay, well, she's dead, but don't come, Lord. No. Okay, let me give you another connection between these. Notice what happens is when the woman with the issue of blood touches Jesus, she's healed, and Jesus says, who touched me? Right. (laughs) And, you know, it's it's almost like a comedy. The disciples are like, what do you mean who touched you? Because there's this big crowd. Everybody's touching you. Probably 50 people that touched him in the last 30 seconds. Exactly. And so the disciples are like, Dude, what's no, going they on? Wouldn't have said no, they, well, they might have. I don't know what they said. <laughs> but why does Jesus want to talk to her? She thinks that she's healed from touching his clothes. She had a superstitious belief that there was magic in her clothes. 
And, and, cool. Je- and yeah. Jesus wants to teach her. So he's searching her out. He's searching in the crowds for this one who's touched him. He knows who it is, but he's searching her out. He's teaching well, her. Well, he wants her to acknowledge herself exactly. that she was healed, and then he wants to interact with her. He wants to instruct her. This is another reason I think this is a believer. So it's he, just beginnings of discipleship. Bingo. And what happens? He says, she comes and she's afraid. Well, why is she afraid? Well, she's touched these people in the crowd. She's touched him. She's been a social outcast for 12 years, and she's afraid. When Jairus comes to Jesus, Jesus says, yeah, I'll go to your house. Well, Jairus is an important man. Who's she? She's a nobody. Right. She is a religious outcast. So she says, he wouldn't want to interact with me. I'll just sneak up behind him and touch the hem of his garment. That's all I want. I just want to touch you. So she's a social, so they're contrast. But but then she fears when she's found out, what's he going to say? What's the crowd going to say? And then they come after she's healed. Here's another connection. Your daughter's dead. And what does Jesus say to Jairus? Don't be afraid. Wow. Don't be afraid. Once again, we see another connection between these accounts. And now I want to throw this out. We ha- I haven't talked to Bob about this, but I'm kind of curious to know what he thinks. Do you think there's a connection with Israel? Yes, but how? The 12. The 12, of course, in Israel, the number 12 is for the 12 tribes of Israel. Yeah. And so 12 often represents Israel. And to have 12 for the number of years of the affliction, and by the way, You know, liberal commentators would say, no, she really didn't have a 12-year, you know, we're just putting that number in. We're just making that up. And the girl really wasn't 12 years old. We're just making that up. No, she really was 12 years old, and the woman really had a 12-year affliction. And the point would be... And God was supervising all of it because Jesus, when he came did all of these things to prove he indeed is the Messiah. Yes. And And this is two of the ways he did it. And just as he took the defilement away from this dead girl and from this woman and raised the dead, he could do that for the nation of Israel. That's right. That's the point. Yeah, because the whole nation was defiled. Exactly. The whole whole nation was unclean. (laughs) That's exactly right. And so... We hope that there's a lot in here. We, we hope that this is a way that you could go into some deeper study into the Gospel of Mark. Well, that's great stuff, Ken. I really like this, and I hope you all are enjoying it. And in the meantime, keep, keep grace, grace in, in focus. focus. We would love to know where you are when you are listening to us. Please take a short minute to send us the call letters of this station and the city where you are listening and how many times a week you listen. Thank you. You will be helping us with our stewardship. Send it to radio at faithalone.org. That's radio at faithalone.org. We are so thankful for our financial partners who keep us on the air. Every gift is tax deductible and very much appreciated. If you'd like to find out how you can give, go to faithalone.org. On our website, we have a church tracker. It's an easy-to-use map that will help you locate those other Free Grace churches that might be in your area. So come visit us at the website and take advantage of our free church tracker. It's at faithalone.org. That's faithalone.org. On our next episode, Jesus sends out His 12 disciples. What is their mission? Please join us. Until then, let's keep grace in focus. The proceeding has been a listener-supported ministry from the Grace Evangelical Society.